friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, you will get an idea about how to check the shoulder flexor muscles and how to identify the substitutions whenever we are taking the assessment of the patient. So let's get started with the practicals. In assessing the shoulder flexors, we must know the muscles which are producing the shoulder flexion range of motion. So there are main two muscles which are responsible for it. First is the anterior fiber of deltoid. Second is coracobrachialis. There are some other muscles also that is pectoralis major as well as the serratus anterior which allows the movement of scapula in the direction of upward rotation as well as in the abduction. So in this video I am going to show you how to assess the shoulder flexors. So first is whenever we are starting with the MMT of shoulder flexors, position of the patient as well as the position of the therapist is the most important thing. So position of the patient is in the sitting position, position of the therapist that is standing behind the patient and behind the side to be tested. So here I am going to test the left shoulder flexors. So now we have idea of the position. Now comes the instruction to the patient. That instruct the patient that to assess the grade 3 as we all know that in the MMT whenever we are starting we always start with the grade 3 so in the grade 3 instruct the patient and stabilize the shoulder that raise your arm up up to the shoulder height so if a person can achieve this we can grade it as a grade 3 MMT for shoulder flexors now comes for the grade 4 in the grade 4 stabilization of the shoulder and with the contoured hand give mild to moderate resistance over the distal humerus and instruct the patient that raise your arm up up to the shoulder level if person can achieve this we can give it a grade 4 now for the grade 5 maximum resistance is applied so stabilization over the shoulder and resistance is applied at the distal humerus and maximum resistance is applied if a person can achieve we can call it as a grade 5 now comes for the grade 2 grade 1 and the grade 0 so in the grade 2 person completes partial range of motion so let me show you the partial range of motion is this much right person completes just a partial range of motion in the, in the grade 2 as the person cannot go against gravity in the full range of motion that is up to the height of shoulder for the grade 1 we need to focus on the contractile activity that is just a little bit activity which can be palpable or which is observable in the anterior fiber of the deltoid and in the grade 0 no movement occurs now comes the substitution in the substitution what happens is there are main three substitutions that other muscles because of certain conditions other muscles are very overactive so they may give us a false interpretation so in order to understand those substitutions let me show you the main three substitutions so first is if the deltoid power is less what the person will do person will externally rotate his arm and then go for shoulder flexion and achieve the level that is equal to the shoulder height so this is because of the activity of the biceps brachii because deltoid power is not that much sufficient this is the first substitution for the checking of the exact anterior fiber of deltoid the forearm should be in the pronation position if not this is kind of substitution if you see a supinated position now comes the substitution number two that a person will raise the arm by from the back of the scapula that is like this if a person is achieving like this this is not the exact checking of the anterior fiber of the deltoid this is a clear cut substitution from the back now comes if overactive trapezius is there overactive trapezius is there in certain conditions what the person will do person will elevate his shoulder and try to achieve the shoulder flexion range of motion right so here we got a false interpretation false interpretation that if a person goes back from behind that is like this and achieving the shoulder range of motion that is the overactive back 
if the trapezius is there, person will achieve like this. And another is, if the biceps activity is there, the person will achieve the shoulder flexion with the arm in the externally rotated position. I hope your concept of the shoulder MMT will be cleared after watching this video. If you have any doubts, do let me know in the comment section. And do spread this video's maximum so that one can understand the practical demonstration of the shoulder flexors. Thank you so much.